これからもプロのアスリートとして、えー、競技者としての他のスケーターと比べ続ける比べ続けられることはなくなりました When Hanyu made his retirement speech he proactively used the word professional athlete which could be confusing to some to many young fans of the sport Those athletes competing in the World Championships and the Olympics are certainly professional enough. But you will be surprised, because they are mostly amateurs. What? Yes. The difference lies in this one word. Are they paid? If they are paid to participate in a competition, then they are professionals. If they aren't paid. No matter how insane their skills are. Now, excuse me, I have to say this. You are, all of you, amateurs. It may be hard for young viewers of the Olympics to imagine. The Olympic Games were created for the amateurs to compete. When Pierre de Coubertin had the idea of reviving the Olympic Games of ancient Greece, he envisaged a strictly amateur affair. In the first modern Olympic Games held in Athens in 1896, all participants must have never competed for money, or else they would be disqualified. One unlucky man who suffered under this amateurism rule is Jim Thorpe. The first Native American athlete who won two gold medals for the United States in the 1912 Summer Olympics. He had his gold medals in decathlon and pentathlon stripped because he had been paid for playing professional baseball. But as the interest to win the Olympic Games mounted, some countries, especially from certain Eastern Bloc nations, such as Russia, began to run the state funded athlete development programs in the 1960s. So these athletes were de facto professionals and they were allowed to compete. At that time, people started calling out the Olympic Committee for hypocrisy. So by the end of the 1980s, the Olympic Committee moved towards allowing full time paid athletes to compete. And Jim Thorpe's stripped gold medals would be reinstated 70 years later in 1983, over 30 years after his death. As if he would know, I ask you. The International Skating Union governing the sport of ice skating and the co organizer for the Olympic Winter Games in skating abides by the amateurism rules, of course. In order to attain the eligibility to attend the ISU competitions, Athletes must not be paid to join these competitions. In fact, they even have to pay ISU in order to join the championships like the Grand Prix events, etc. Even though most remuneration restrictions rules for the skaters are going lax following the Olympic movements, which allow athletes to get endorsement and participate in some ice shows, the skaters still have to follow a series of strict protocols and only attend competitions sanctioned by the ISU to maintain their eligibility to compete in the championships. Hence, there's such a term going pro in skating. Which normally means retirements from the ISU organized competitions. Turning pro, it's free, n g it's liberating. So, what does being a professional athlete really mean? If you're an NBA or soccer fan, you'll know that this is the time of year where we are constantly on the lookout for the latest transfer and trade news and rumors. So, these are the professional athletes' lives big money and big ticketed item sales. It means professional management of the athlete's career. It means endless opportunities with minimal restrictions from the rules of competitions. For 24 year old Soria Bonley, this night represents the start of a new life, her professional debut right here. How does it feel to finally be able to do that backflip and not be penalized for it? That's cool. I can do it. I say, well, it's okay. Nobody's gonna yell on me. I will be just free. And what's lying ahead of Hanyu's professional skating career? It's too early to tell. But just in case he w a n t to start his own boy band group on ice, He can now do so without worrying that will be an underscore by the judges. なんかもっと決意に満ち溢れたものですし、もっともっと希望に満ち溢れたものだなって自分の中では思っていたので、なんかむしろ今は自分としてはこれからも期待してやってくださいって胸張って言えるっていう気持ちでいます。あともっともっとその試合っていう限られた場所だけじゃなくて、もっといろんな方法で自分のスケートを見ていただく機会があるかなというふうに思ってますし作っていきたいなって考えているのであのぜひ楽しみにしていただきたいななんて自分では思っています。